Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am with my buddy Scott. Hello guys, good to be here. Today we're going to be reviewing this arcade racing wheel from Evo Retro. Yeah, so today we're going to take a look at this relatively inexpensive wheel, and you and I are going to be playing a bunch of games. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to it. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and unbox this, but I do want to let you know that this was sent to me for review. However, all of our opinions are our own. On the top there, we have the instruction manual in several languages. And then here is the racing wheel. And then right below that, you have the pedals. The idea behind this wheel is to make an affordable option for people who are looking to use a racing wheel in arcade games. And that's an important distinction because it's not necessarily designed for racing sims like Gran Turismo, although it will work and I'll show that a little bit later in the video. However, it's not gonna be at the same hardcore level that those type of gamers are looking for. So I just wanna put that out there right at the beginning here. And they're launching this at $90 US on Amazon. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's definitely one of the cheapest wheels on the market currently. I've looked at others from, you know, bigger manufacturers, and it seems like a lot of the hardcore ones start at around 300 and go up to say 500 or $600. And some of the features include a wheel that will turn 270 degrees. So that's a pretty nice turn radius. It also has a vibration or rumble motor, and it supports three levels of sensitivity. And it's compatible with the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, and PC. And the way it's able to do that is that it has five programmable buttons on it that allow you to map different buttons to different parts of the wheel or the pedals, and you'll see that. And so we're gonna hook it up first to the PlayStation 4, and it's pretty straightforward. You basically just connect all the wires that are included with it. The only caveat here is that it does need to connect to your PlayStation 4 controller. You don't technically have to ever use the PlayStation 4 controller, but it does need to be connected to the wheel for some reason. The first game we wanna check out is the arcade racing game, Horizon Chase Turbo. Now you have to kind of forgive my gaming setup here because my game room is mostly designed for me to play console games leaning back on my couch. And so ideally this wheel would probably want to be mounted on say a desk or something like that, but I don't have it. And so instead I decided to use these TV trays and they're actually working pretty well despite being somewhat wobbly, but the wheel itself is actually bolted onto there really tightly. It is not moving at all. We definitely found this game to be very enjoyable with this wheel. It kind of reminds me of being in an actual arcade and holding one of these type of controllers, and it just fits this game very well. And again, you can see me using the full range and motion of the turning radius there. So again, it works, it works really well. Next, I want to check out Need for Speed Rivals. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because this is kind of a mix between an arcade game and a sim. There's a little bit more nuance when it comes to the steering, right? It's not just slamming it left and slamming it right all the time. You need to, you need to kind of finesse it a little bit more. And this is where sensitivity comes into play. So on the wheel, you'll see that there's a big red button. And if you hold it down and push up, that turns up the sensitivity and there's two levels of it. And if you want it to be less sensitive, you just push down on the D-pad. And so finding what works and what doesn't for each person takes a little bit of time, but it's nice that that sensitivity is there. I tend to like the sensitivity turned up high where it's kind of one-to-one -one with how I would steer and, and maybe go left or right where Scott was, he was kind of easing into it more, and so he likes the sensitivity turned down. So again, it's nice that you have options. At this point, I was kind of curious to try it with an actual racing sim. Now, I know they don't officially support it, but you know, people are gonna have these in their game collections, so I think it's important to at least try it. And what I quickly discovered is that there is a massive dead zone and I, when I say massive, it, I, it's it's several degrees, but basically it's not one to one. So the dead zone is at the top of the steering wheel when you're going straight. And that's why this is not necessarily going to work with most racing game sim players, right? So just be aware that that exists. But I'll be honest, after a while I was able to compensate for it. And you see me doing a rally race here. And this was pretty fun, actually. I was digging this. One issue that we did run into with this is that those pedals seem to kind of slide around a lot. It's not a heavy pedal box. 
And it does have these little rubber patches down there, which probably would keep it stationary better on say hardwood floors. I have carpet. And so, you know, when the racing gets intense and you're doing a lot of giving it gas and putting on the brake, it tends to kind of push it forward. And so several times I had to kind of like pause the game and, you know, pull those back a little bit. So just be aware, depending on the floor and maybe how excited you get when you're using the pedals, they may move around a little bit. By the way, I did think it's kind of curious that they show support for the PS4, but it doesn't say PS5 anywhere on the Kickstarter. So I did ask them about that, if it supports it, and they said not officially. It's because it needs to be tethered to a controller. However, they're looking into it. So maybe in the future, they'll be able to have support for the PS5. Now let's go ahead and connect it to the Nintendo Switch. For this to be detected correctly, what you need to do is go into the system settings of the Switch, go down to controllers and sensors, and then turn on Pro Controller Wired Communication. And then you plug the wheel into the USB port of the Nintendo dock and it will be detected. However, getting those pedals to work in Mario Kart takes another step because it's currently configured to be used on the PlayStation 4. And so that's where those programmable buttons come in. So you hold down the PR button on the wheel itself, those light up down there. And then what you can do is you can push a button on the wheel and then map it to anything else that you really want. In this case, we wanna map it to the pedals down below. You do that and you're golden. And so playing Mario Kart with a wheel, you know, takes a little bit of time to get used to. I've put many, many hours into this game. So has Scott, you know, just primarily using the, the Joy-Cons. And so it is a little bit of a uh, learning curve to go over to a wheel, right? Something very physical like that. Uh, but after a couple of races though, we were definitely getting into it. You know, would this be my preferred way of playing this game? I'm not entirely sure, but it does work. Next, I wanted to check out Need for Speed Hot Pursuit on the Switch, and I was pleasantly surprised by how well this game controlled with this wheel. I would say, actually, you know, this is a great experience. I don't know what it is about this particular game and this wheel, but I do feel like this was a very good match for these two. You know, especially sliding around and drifting in this game felt so good. And the rumble in the wheel was giving me some great feedback, especially when I went off road just a little bit. This was really fun. I was definitely digging this. And if I was to guess, now that I think about it, this game is probably a little bit more arcadey than Rivals that we were playing just a little bit earlier. I think that's probably why this game feels like it's just a better fit for this particular wheel. You'll notice that this has a gear shifter on the right, as well as paddle shifters behind the wheel. And we mess with this a bit and it works, especially considering that you can map any button to any function of those paddle shifters or gearbox. But I'll be honest, I mean, we're playing fast paced arcade racing games here. And so I always play these just in automatic mode, but it's an option if you prefer to manual shift your cars. And so what do we think about this? Well, Scott and I spent many hours playing with this and we came away with the conclusion that it's a pretty decent wheel for the price, right? It's it's very inexpensive compared to some of the pro ones that are out there on the market. It does have some nice features like how far you can actually turn that wheel and also the programmable buttons really came in handy. If we ever ran into a situation where the game wasn't supported out of the box, simply just being able to program them really quickly resolved everything. And again, the launch price for this on Amazon is $90 US. That seems like a pretty good deal. Do I wish that the wheel was a little bit more accurate? And is it for me? Mm, probably not. I think this is gonna be definitely for more casual arcade racing fans, uh, people who maybe have small children that you know aren't gonna be too upset if they spill Kool-Aid or, or a peanut butter sandwich on it, you know what I mean? And so if that's you, if you're looking for a relatively inexpensive arcade wheel for the PS4, the Switch, or the PC, you might wanna take a look. And before we go, I do wanna give a shout out to my buddy Scott who helped me greatly with this video. He's one of my friends that's really big into cars. As a matter of fact, he's got a brand new Golf R. So if you are a Volkswagen fan, you know how cool that car is. And so thanks for helping out with this video, dude. And as always, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.